What's up guys, the Six Foot Simp here. We're gonna go over a clip today from a combination of two guys I like to watch. It's complicated and mediocre tutorials and reviews. They were in Las Vegas interviewing some women and this topic was pretty good. I liked it because it attacked the subject that I'm very familiar with, which is mental health. Even talk about therapy a little bit. So let's get into this. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, and let's keep it simple. Can I ask a question? Right, okay, right. are you more likely to see Physical abuse from men to women or verbal abuse from women to men? Verbal. Verbal abuse from women and to I'm men. I'm not discounting the physical abuse, but why is verbal abuse so rarely talked about? I don't know. Because I, I mean, think they're so it's used a, to it. It's right? a abuse too. Like, even though they ain't putting their hands on you, they saying hurtful things that hurt your feelings or like yeah. saying stuff that make you mad. Like, that's still abuse to me. So, this is an interesting statement because she's acknowledging that emotional abuse is abuse which is definitely true but it's like doing something intentionally to hurt someone's feelings you gotta understand it probably comes from a place of ill intent and i wonder do they do it because maybe a woman typically pound for pound isn't as strong as men obviously there's certain outliers when a woman is stronger or bigger but for the most cases men are typically bigger and stronger so the way to hurt them is with words and emotional abuse since physical abuse is not always an option yeah that's the reason we be wanting to fight them because the shit that they say like, what, so what do you think is worse physical or emotional abuse emotional well, hold so, on. So, so you guys, hear, so you guys hurt us more, is what you're saying? Yeah, well, it's both. It's, I'm gonna say both because yeah. it depends on who the person is. Like, how physical are we going here? Because if I hit you, that's gonna hurt you. And if I say you a bitch or your mama a bitch, that's gonna hurt you too. Yeah. So you know what I'm well, saying? Well, I so yeah, this basically what I was just saying. She intentionally is saying words like, "Oh, your mama's a bitch." Now she knows that that term is probably going to rouse someone up especially a man and if it's already a heated argument adding that fuel to the fire can bear can be very detrimental now it's like you go around poking the bear you can't get mad if it awakens and bites you and the same thing is you got to understand that not every man's going to practice chivalry or that walk away be the bigger man card sometimes they're going to get riled up to the point where they do hit a woman and i'm not condoning this but if this happens you got to understand all because you're physically weaker does not give you the pass to hit a man and think he's not going to do anything and just adding more fuel to the fire by cursing him out or calling his mom names or him names is just adding more to it so this notion that you're protected by this this unwritten code of chivalry or manning up is very dangerous and this just proves what they're saying that they do it intentionally so you could argue oh are they just mad in the heat of the moment maybe but they know what they're doing well i think um you know i think the physical abuse you know you can kind of see it the emotional abuse can can go undiagnosed yeah, and i think the yeah. the the undiagnosed and emotional abuse actually leads to a lot of you know people control alt deleting so basically he's saying control alt deleting that's using the word suicide without saying it for youtube friendliness but basically that's true i talked about it on previous videos about how men are four to five times more likely to commit suicide than women are and this is a huge thing to think about because when you talk about emotional abuse like he said you can see if someone has a broken leg or if they're in a wheelchair, they're going to have a cast on or going to be in the chair. But if someone's depressed or going through a tough time, especially a man, you won't be able to see. You don't know if he's been working nine, 10 hour days, coming home to a woman, chewing his head off and trying to belittle him and demasculate him. This is not something you can just visually see. And when he says diagnose, that's getting to more of my field of psychology. Because remember, six foot simp. Simp stands for scientists informing modern people. And I'm a behavior scientist, more specifically psychology. So I understand diagnosis is something we call DSM-5, the diagnostics manual. And you see the different criteria needed to see what's anxiety disorders or depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, things of that nature. Because when you get into those levels, because obviously when it comes to mental health, there's a, a, a dynamic, it's a spectrum. Everyone deals with that when it comes to mental health, but then there's more severe disorders. So when he's talking about seeing these types of things, you gotta understand what plays into them and adding more fuel to the fire, like calling people out their name and doing things emotionally abusive, it's not going to help um, off the face of this earth. And it's unfortunate. But, you know, you guys say that kind of women do that more to men than men have physical uh, abuse towards women more. So I guess why don't we talk more about the emotional abuse? I I'm not going to lie. When I get mad, I say crazy shit and I say hurtful shit. So because I know that's going to hurt you and it's going to hurt your feelings. But that's just because I was hurt. 
So if you don't hurt me, then we ain't got nothing. Are are you so are you doing anything to actively work on the previous trauma in your life to be better in relationships? I'm trying for real. I'm really trying to work on my attitude and work on myself. Have you gone to therapy? No. Cause I can't talk to nobody about I'm I'm rather talk to my friends or talk to her. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna go pay all this money to go talk to somebody that don't even know me. Okay, so like I just said, I'm a psychology guy and there's so much to unpack right here. So she said she doesn't want to go pay someone she doesn't even know for therapy when she can just talk to her friends. So let's address each of those points. First and foremost, if money's an issue, there's a lot of apps and services now that make therapy a lot more affordable so you can get a licensed professional like BetterHelp. I think it's like $250 a month to get direct therapeutic help without paying the expensive cost because sometimes a therapist can be a hundred to two hundred dollars a session so if you see them once a week you're talking about almost a thousand dollars a month so for a quarter of the price you can get help so that refutes kind of the money argument now let's go into talk about talking to a friend I guess media, TV, movies has a misconception that a therapist is just someone you lay down on their couch and vent your problems to them. Now, granted, there's a part of talk therapy that involves talking about issues you're going through, but a friend can only do that. You can vent to them. They can give you their two cents, their input, their advice. But are they really solving anything? Because remember, therapy is a skill. It's techniques. There's science behind it. And I myself was doing a doctorate in psychology to be a, a clinical psychologist to be a therapist pretty much and we learn different skill sets like if i say are you familiar with the abc model from cognitive behavior therapy most of you probably say huh you have no idea that's a very basic a model right there so it's nothing even extreme and if you don't know that you have no place giving advice because advice can go all types of ways a therapist is just like a personal trainer you come in and say, oh, I'm going to lose 20 pounds. How long do you think it'll take? What do I need to do to do it? Can you help me outside of the gym? Therapist does the same thing. I have this issue going on or issues. How do we go about it? What's the time frame? And eventually you want to succeed the sessions slowly but surely and end them because you don't always want to be going because you want to get better. So therapy is not just talking it out. That's a big misconception. And going to friends for advice could be dangerous. I feel like it's a waste. So, so, so I think that part of the benefit is to have a professional... So you could talk well, to your friends yeah. and they can kind of enable your behavior, right? Like, you know, both you guys, I know you, you said that you're not toxic. You said that you are toxic, but like, you know what I'm saying? If you're, if you're, if you do something toxic and then you say, well, yeah, girl, you know, keep doing it again, you know, but. It so that's another good point. Like you said, you can enable your friends by giving them this feedback and their toxic behavior just gets reinforced. Like I said, when you talk about the DSM-5, we're looking at different ways to either diagnose a disorder or understand the severity of presenting symptoms each disorder has about eight to nine symptoms and you have to qualify about six and six of them so this whole notion that anyone who's sad is depressed is not how it works and that's why i think this is a misconception because by that logic everyone gets sad but not everyone's clinically depressed but you can't make this discrepancy between the two if you don't know what you're looking for and your friends i guarantee you will not know there's a big thing i talk about with depression is a lot of people look for mopey faces being sad but some of the other symptoms are weight gain weight loss about five to ten pounds in a short amount of time about a month right these are things people don't think about or also you can look at their habits behavioral habits are they showering as much brushing their teeth these are things people don't notice or even know to look for or one of my favorites i talk about is are they not doing things they usually find fun in let's say they like to go fishing all the time they go fishing every weekend for the last 10 years but you ask jimmy and say hey when the last time you went fishing he's like i don't know seven eight months you probably wouldn't think twice about it. like, oh, I guess he's just been busy. Or maybe he's so depressed he's not doing anything he enjoys anymore. These are all things that people say, I wish I knew the signs. You probably did see the signs, but you didn't know what you were looking for. We typically miss the things we're not looking for. It's like a flashlight in the dark. Whatever corner of the room you're pointing to is all you're going to see. And a lot of times those symptoms that you're missing are in the other corners. You're not going to see them. So depression and other mental health issues are a big deal. And your friends are probably not going to see those things. But it's toxic in but nature. A but a therapist. I be telling my friends the truth. Like, I'm the go-to person with my friends. I tell them the truth. Like, I, I ain't gonna lie. Me personally, I'm a cold-hearted person. And when I say cold-hearted, like, 
I don't too much go back and forth with no guy. I went through it one time with my child father. I'll never do it again. So if you don't treat me how I'll walk the fuck out your life so quick. And like my friends, they be going, I ain't going back. They tell you, like, they be like, I need you gotta have a heart. Shit. I got one, but I ain't finna let nobody play on it either. Like, I ain't no I ain't no back and forth type of person. I just why why so see this right here, this just proves why your friends giving you advice is not always the best. You want objective feedback and that sounds like a person who's vindictive and takes their own issues and puts it on their friends. And this is called transference in therapy. And once again, do you notice know these terms? Not something major, but if you're in the field, you know it. Transference is when the therapist has things going on because remember, they're people too. But if you take your issues and take it out on the client, you're gonna do them a disservice. And that's the perfect point why a friend should not be your therapist. Yes, you can talk to them, get advice, vent, but they should not be trying to give you help to the point where they're influencing your life and could put you down the wrong path. Why are men taught how to treat women, but women aren't taught how to treat men? I feel like, well, actually I was just telling my auntie this. I feel like men, as a child, when they grow up, we teach them to be hard. Like your son fall, you be like, get up, don't cry, you a man. But then when they get older in life, we want them to be emotional to us. They, we want them to tell us what's going on, but they whole life, why, why they was talking. So th that's actually a very good point she made. Typically boys are told, don't cry, man up, suck it up, don't be a bitch, things of that nature. Now, am I saying that a boy should have a little more standard of holding in his emotions to an extent and have some stoicism? I think so. I really believe in that. But I think you should also be in tune with your emotions. What that means is you're not wearing your heart on your sleeve, crying or being overly emotional just because. It means that you understand what you're feeling. Like I said, talking about these symptoms. If you're sad, you understand why you're sad. If you're if you're lonely, you don't let it get to you to the point that you start doing reckless behaviors, being hypersexual or doing drugs or things of that nature. These are all things to think about because like she said, when you bottle it up, up, it has to come out somewhere and men are typically told to hold it in i myself have suffered from that and since i'm in the psych field i understand how to be more productive with my feelings and emotions and that's a good point she made so i agree with there so yeah we're gonna wrap this video up right here thanks again for the clip from mediocre tutorials and reviews and it's complicated this is a great conversation make sure you go subscribe to their channels and like their videos also make sure you like ours and like I said, this topic was very important. I'm glad to see this discussion being had. Mediocre Tutorials did a great job talking about mental health, therapy, how important it is. And this conversation needs to keep going in all communities, but especially the black community. So thanks guys for tuning in and keep it simple.